Hi, I'm Dr. Gemma, and welcome back to Cognitive, the Knitting Psychology Podcast. Cheerfully and somewhat irregularly in business since 2008. Segments today may include what's on my hooks, needles, and spindles, a strategy, something I really like, put a lid on it, oh shoot, and blather. So sit back, put your feet up, pick up your knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, or dyeing, (laughs) or any other yarny thing you're doing, and get ready to enjoy. Well, hello there. It's Dr. Gemma, and welcome to episode 146 of the Cognitive Podcast, which this week I'm calling All Better. Let me give you a little heads up. There is a picture of a fuzzy, felty spider at the top of the show notes. We found this little guy in the dining room. That's a first in 23 years. What is he? He's completely harmless. In fact, he just looks like a toy, really, when you see him. But if you don't like pictures of spiders, you can't see any details. It's just legs and a furry body. But if you don't like spiders, don't look at that, okay? But the thing is, it is that time of year when the male tarantulas go looking for girlfriends. And they don't usually come in the house. In fact, they do everything, everything to avoid us. They're not poisonous. They have a minor venom, but apparently it's not serious. And let me tell you, Having lived in the desert for over 20 years, these guys would do anything rather than meet you. So it's a little bit of a surprise, but he was carefully tipped into Tupperware and removed to the desert where I'm sure he's looking for his Sheila and we're all just happy without him in the house. Your comments are very welcome. Please feel free to comment on the blog at cognitivepodcast.blogspot.com or go to our group on Ravelry. This is especially relevant because I'd like you to be telling me what you think about the Cognitive Fiber Retreat and if you have any ideas. Which leads me to say in the warm thanks department, of course, everybody who is supporting CFR 2023, this week the Maker Stash and Raspberries Studio, two really great people on Etsy came through with goodie bag stuffings and door prizes. I did not give you pictures, but they're wonderful. The other thing I want to point out, we had a little misunderstanding with a vendor. Let me explain that. The vendors who are coming are not expected to contribute to the goodie bag. No, no, no. The goodie bags are about finding indie people on Etsy or any other place and promoting them. One of the purposes of the Cognitive Fiber Retreat has always been to support independent vendors. Because when CFR was founded, we had the market crash back in 2009. And in the midst of this, a group of famous knitters decided to do a really super expensive conference up in Portland. And I mean, I was working, my husband was working, and we could not afford for me to go. It was that expensive. And so that's fine. You know, if... The rich girls want to get together and do this. That's great. Nothing against them, but I didn't like that. And after everybody was touting how knitters are better people than other people and all that, and then this, I thought that was pretty silly. And my group up in the AV was discussing it one week at our knit meet, and we realized we were really scared the independent vendors were going to go out of business because of the market crash. And again, that's happening this year with the loss of stitches. The fear is we're going to lose our indies who really relied on stitches. So that's what CFR is. We always want to support independent vendors. And we also want to have things reasonably priced. So having said that, no, if you are coming, any of you vendors who are coming to CFR, you are not expected to contribute to the goodie bag. For a very simple reason. You will be contributing to the raffles. That is way enough and we love you. So in the meantime, you know, CFR, all the information, the thread is there in the show notes and it's in Ravelry. That's where that link will lead you to our group on Ravelry. And there's an info thread called something like CFR 2023 information thread, something, you know, exotic like that. So all the info you need is right there. Now, The last day to pay for your attendance fee for the people on the list was September 1st. This is 
September 3rd at 8, 19 p.m. as I record this. So that means if you haven't paid, you no longer have a place. That's all. So 40 people paid and we have 10 openings. So I did try to nudge. I went through the list of the people who hadn't paid and I tried to message them and say, hey, you know, do you still want to come? Because there are some reasons I can understand. You know, we did this well in advance that if you don't want to come, that's cool. So it really doesn't matter. I nudged them, but I better hear from them fast. So if you know anybody who wants to come, we have 10 open spaces. We have 40 people paid. We have space for at least 10 more people. So if you want to come to CFR, we are really looking forward to it. You know, go to that information thread and look at how to pay. You can contact me through Ravelry if you're still not finding out. It's all good. But please tell your friends who might want to come because we've got 10 open spaces, something I've never had to say before. But again, we haven't done this for eight years. And I think some people just aren't going to remember how this works. But listen, 40 people, we got enough. We, we're a little beyond breaking even. So now I'm going to look at how we do the goodie bags and do I just buy bags, which I think has been one solution we liked. Remember that we don't have the money that we used to have before for the simple reason that we have to pay now for the event room, which is a bit of a bummer. Nonetheless, we are doing well and I'm looking forward to seeing at least 40 people. Also, I am also looking forward to on the Sunday after, on Sunday, November 12th, I really would like us to gather for brunch. We will find a place, Santa Clarita is full of them, and I want a breakdown of what you think worked and what you think didn't. Also, this is going to include, did we like the venue, which I'm looking forward to. You have to remember the old venue out in Tehachapi. It was remote. It was harder to get to. I was trying to make up for that because some of us have aged. And I was worried about some of the vendors being able to find us for the first time. But this is a very different venue. We are very suburban now. We're not out in the countryside. So it's not the hokey little restaurants. We got some great eating places. But, you know, there's a certain loss of the intimacy as well. So I want to see how this works. So please, I will want your feedback. Okay. Also remember, this is the first year again. Remember, I did this for the first time in 2009. And I'm kind of relearning it. So hopefully, if you've gotten a little tired of it in the podcast, please remember this will get smoother from year to year, that the attendees are also going to learn how it works. Once you attend, you are always first dibs. Okay, so you will always hear about it first if you follow the podcast and follow the podcast notes. And we always try to take our previous attendees first. We want them. That's why we have a pay date. That's why September 1st is the date is everybody who came before. I'm giving you your chance to get in before we start, you know, opening it up anymore. What happened? Well, the first year we did fill up. I think we had 49, something like that. We had a wait list, but I think we ended up with like 49 total. Every year after that, no problem filling it. This is a fun event. It's a really good one. And I have to say, it's been good, not just because of what I do, but because the attendees have been great. So I'm really looking forward to this. Okay. So if you have not contacted me or paid or whatever, pay now because whoever pays gets those last 10 spaces. And if you go, if you know anybody who hasn't paid, if you know anybody on that list, and you're listening to me, go check their name. If they haven't paid, let them know because we don't take money at the door. Enough of this madness. There is still the vendors list. They've all confirmed. I'm so excited. Lisa Souza just mentioned us in her latest newsletter update that she's coming. I am so happy, particularly since I just bought a sweater's worth of her beautiful superwash merino in St. Louis blues because I want to make a Constellations type of sweater. Woo! And I'm excited because I haven't seen Oink or Laser Sheep or Alpenglow or Tina in the flesh. And they all have things I really want to buy, buy, buy. So also, please, again, don't forget the information on the sea glass colorway and the shawl that Brenda Castile, good stuff, is making with it. And the beautiful bags, that is all there in the show notes. And the links are there. Go see the, it'll take you to the info thread on Ravelry where we've got Brenda's full posting. So please go look at that. But that bag is adorable and I can't wait to get that colorway because them's my colors. 
Meanwhile, the mini skein swap is still on. Please don't miss it. The information is there, the goodie bags. I'm a bit stalled. I, I need to get back to them and see, but we're doing pretty well. We've got a nice little pile of goodies sitting right next to my left leg, even as I speak. I have a ton of mini skeins, so that's good. Jasmine Nitmore and I were chatting about my latest episode, and this ended up with her saying, you know, I could teach a steaking class. What I love about that, I have no class schedule right now because I'm just not sure how we're going to be able to do that. I need to see the traffic flow in the hotel. But it's November, ain't nobody going to be at the pool. So as long as the weather is good, we'll probably be out around the patio, around the pool. There is the lobby. The room we're using is sort of back on the other side of the lobby from the elevators to the bedrooms. So we've got like this kind of corner of the building is what I'm saying. And we may be able to do the class right there in the conference room. I really have to see how this is going to work out because this is drastically different in layout than what we used to have. Okay. That's why I'm so uncertain, but we have offers for all sorts of classes. So what I think is going to happen is Saturday morning, we're going to have that pre-meeting at the pool and we're probably going to take a quick poll of who wants classes, what do they want? And the classes can be just about anywhere. Meanwhile, I think it was Steffi Joe, I'm not sure. Somebody said the hotel is now saying that you can only get the special room rate on the king size bedrooms, that they've run out of queen size bedrooms. Okie dokie. Things you should know. If you are rooming with somebody, there is an embassy suites literally 10 steps away in the same parking lot. So you can go over there and get a suite with somebody. It's all okay because the hotel does not have any minimum room requirement here. We are paying for this banqueting room. So now I, in my fantasy land, they say, oh gosh, just like the last hotel did. Oh gosh, you have so many rooms sold. We'll just give you that banqueting room. I don't think that's going to happen. That's what happened with the La Quinta. And we had that deal ever after. On the first year, they just walked up and handed me the money back and said, you sold so many rooms. Remember, that was in a remote town, Tehachapi. This is not a remote town. So will they do this? I doubt it. I think the manager probably scores brownie points for selling all these rooms and the event room. Yeah, I know. The good old days are gone. Okay. But at any rate, do not panic. If you want to share with somebody, you can always go over to the embassy suites. It'll be a touch more expensive, but I don't think it's that drastic a difference. Also, as you will find out later, I now have a place to dispose of surplus yarn. So let's do a yarn exchange. Anybody who comes, bring any yarn you want to get rid of, and we will just have a table. I have no idea how and when, but we will make it work. There will be a table. Probably it's going to be in the event room. You can bring your yarn. You can just leave it on the table, or you can sit there and horse trade for other yarn, whatever you want to do. My guess is this is going to get set up early. And it's going to be a pretty hot topic. We've done it before. Redsnitz used to take the leftovers and give them to the people she was working with as a volunteer. I have a place now, but if anybody else wants that extra yarn, you are welcome to it. I don't own it by default. So if you have a charity you want to give it to. The other possibility, we may very well give it to Mother Bear. It just occurs to me that that could go to Mother Bear as an extra and, you know, the any excess from the admissions fees can go to uh, sending it to Mother Bear. I'm sitting here writing this in because I just realized that is a really good idea. But I also have another place to put it too. So all of this will be great. Meanwhile, do not forget, if you bring a completed Mother Bear, that is, it is done. The face is on it, it is finished, except for the stuff they put on it, like the heart. If you bring that, you get an extra raffle ticket. So you got any mother bears, please bring them with you. Will we be sending them to mother bear? I think not at this point, but if we get 50 people, yes. If we get 50 people, if we get 10 more people, we will certainly have the cash to mail it to mother bear. If we don't, I'll pay to mail it to mother bear, but that's if we get 50 people. As we are at 40 people, I want to use the extras to buy from our vendors. I want to use any excess money to buy from all the vendors, okay? But anyway, bring a completed Mother Bear, get an extra raffle ticket. Mother Bear Project is still the official charity of the Cognitive Podcast. So meanwhile, 
for the rest of you, what's on my hooks and needles? Nothing is finished. However, the stash toss is looking good. 11 skeins in versus, are you ready for this? 58 out. Why? Well, I went on to Facebook and I'll talk about this more a little bit in later in the strategy, but I discovered a group called SCV, that is Santa Clarita Valley, free craft supplies. Let me tell you kids, if you have one of these groups locally, join it. If you don't, found one. This was the greatest thing. They have this thread and they just offer up their extra crafting goodies for free. And that's the rule. You can't pay for it. And, you know, usually it sounds like I've got some extra beads, PM me, whatever. But God bless their organizers. They said, and I'm reading this right out of the show notes, free craft giveaway today, September 2nd, 5 p.m. at Canyon Country Park. Near parking lot, not near the baseball diamond side. Bring your shopping bags. If you are bringing items, please plan to take back what you bring. Okay, so I thought that's good. And I grabbed up all my old acrylic yarn that I'm not using in bits and bobs because earlier in the week, somebody posted that she wanted to start a crocheting club for her teenage daughter. So she needed hooks and yarn. So I thought acrylic yarn, that's great. So I cleared out a huge amount of space in my stash to the point where all my various project bags that are empty and all that were sitting on the floor. They are now in one of my bins and I had four, count them, four bags. You remember the old project bags from the previous CFRs? Those bags. Filled four of them. I gave myself 10 skeins credit. It was probably closer to 20, but you know, okay. It cleared out so much space. So I have this big space now on the floor as I sit here next to the cardboard box of Doomy Doom Doom, which is also rapidly clearing out. Of course, it was clear, but I refilled it because I'm that kind of idiot. But no, all joking aside, I had put in all my sweater yarns for the two sweaters that I'm currently making. So I now have the space and I got rid of 10 skeins that way. And they said, you got to stay five to seven until your stuff is gone. And if it doesn't go, you got to take it home. So I go walking into this parking lot with my car, you know, I park my car and I go walking across and I realize there's like 40 cars and it's raining and it's getting dark because of the rain and everybody's there. They've set up tables. It's all us. There is nobody in this park at this hour. Let me tell you on a Saturday night, I walked in, I held the four shopping bags in the air and I screamed yarn and everybody started laughing and pointed at this woman in a striped t-shirt. And she came up and said, I'll take it all. She didn't ask any questions. And I realized, ah, it's the crocheting group lady. And I gave her some good stuff. I threw in a few skeins of wool sport weight that I just needed to get rid of. Small bits and bobs, some Malabrigo. Yes, Malabrigo. A little bit of very ancient Cascade sport. I don't knit in sport. And I don't really want to do amigurumi. And I just said, you know, if I want to do bears, I have so much leftover worsted. I'll do bears. And, you know, frankly, you go to Joanne's in the middle of a sale, you spend five bucks, you can make bears, you can buy the stuff you need. But I just wanted to get this out. I'm really trying to clear this room and reduce my stash. So there we go. That was wonderful. Meanwhile, I have not finished the two pair of shorts based on simplicity pattern 8558. This is a contemporary pattern. I am just waiting until I feel ready to do them. But they are almost done. So that's probably going to be an hour at the most to finish both pairs. In the meantime, the Llama Love Sweater, there's a picture of me trying it on. No, that is not try it on tubing, that is just waste yarn. Because I can't find my try it on tubing. Every time I turn around, I find it, but no, not when I tried this. So, you know, no big deal. And I put it on the waste yarn and tried it on. It's such a great fit. I was worried it was going to be tight across the motifs. No, it's really good. And when it's blocked, it'll be even better. It's just a good fit now and it'll be a great fit once it, the yarn has puffed up and loosened up a little bit. So I'm very, very pleased with the fit of that. This is from Megan Regan, alias Bad Wolf Girl Knits. She's all over the place because she does fangirl patterns, but frankly, I am a llama fangirl. So I am loving this. You may see also, I did adjust the color work a slight bit as I described previously. So it's not the big full pattern with the hearts and the blue llamas, but I'm really happy with it. I've got about, as I say, there's about two more inches to go before I hit the ribbing on the body and then it's onto the arms. This has been my potato chip knitting for the last 10 days or so and I'm just loving that. I'm just loving that. 
I really felt burned out on socks. And so I'm very happily working on this. But I also fell in love with the color work, as I mentioned last week. So yes, I found this heap of old Cascade 220. I don't think it's a super wash. And I, as I told you, I ordered three skeins of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in worsted to complete the colors. And it's two skeins of the lighter lavender there, and then one skein of the darker. And then I used the white left over from the llama sweater. And I started the superstition sweater. And last week I had it done up to the color work and was waiting for the yarn. The yarn came. As you can see, I got right into it. I had so much fun. I love the little Peary's. I did adapt one of the Peary's, the second row of color there. Like there's a row that's like little half circles of the paler lavender. The second Peary, which is two colors, she had it in such a way that it was two rows and in the top row it was three stitches across, but she was using three colors in that row. I don't like that. I really want to stick to the traditional stranded where you do, well, Fair Isle stranded, where you do two colors per row. And the background color is in the row, and so I did not use the second highlight color. So instead, I took the color that's on the bottom and I also put it in the center on the top. So I made sort of these little crosses instead of the triangles. And I like that because there's just no way I want to do what she was doing there. But everything else is so far true to pattern. I'm up to the black cats, which really are purple cats, but the darker purple, if you look at the color way, you can see. So that's really delightful. I have my yarn and I am probably going to get through that tomorrow. I still have the links in the show notes to the books and the video that were informing these projects, and I can't recommend them enough. I am really looking forward to digging into the Scandinavian Motifs book to design my own, because I'm just so enjoying that. Pennsylvania Dutch Embroidery? Not really, not now. I'm just not in that place. I thought I was going to do it in the summer, because it would be lightweight, but I, you know, you just have to be in that place to embroider. Dizzy Blondes, no action there. I'm still collecting fuzzballs from Minerva Daily. And I do have a whole spindle full of her fur. I just need to really make the time to stop and work on it. I suspect that will happen at CFR because somebody's bound to bring the gear I need. I really would like to brush out her fur so that it will spin more easily. And of course it is going to have to be washed. It's still in the grease. But I want to apply it before I wash it actually because it is very, very short and fine. So I want it plied in with something thicker that will hold it together a bit. So meanwhile, on to a strategy. Well, the strategy, I was doing Ben Franklin and Stoicism, but I want to kind of stop because something happened this week, and it was based on finding that Santa Clarita group for free craft supplies. When I was there, I had so much fun. I met a lot of other women, and they were really nice and supportive. They all kind of were like me. They were just sort of middle class people with all this craft stuff. And they were basically my age or slightly younger. And they had all sorts of stuff. They had paper cutting supplies. One woman walked up to me and said, you got beads? And I said, no, but I will next time. Because now I just realized if they do this once a month, I am emptying out craft stuff. I am really going to clear out stuff. I am so excited and pleased about this. And this made me take a look at my social media. I started with Facebook and I realized it's way out of control that all these things are showing up. I don't know what my algorithms are doing, but I said, this has to stop. So I started dropping things that I didn't like. You may remember this. I did this a few years ago. And I also started looking for more groups that were based on my interests. As I went on with this, the algorithms caught up with me. So suddenly I started seeing gardening groups, craft groups, watercolor groups, knitting groups, sock knitting groups. In a matter of minutes, my Facebook just increased in value 100%. I was so pleased about that. Instagram's kind of a train wreck because they do just so much advertising now, but I still hold on to it because that's where I see a lot of TikToks because if you're going to rearrange your social media, may I suggest that you cut down on the channels? That TikTok is great, but it's a time suck. And I realized almost everything I want to see on it is showing up on Instagram. ASL stuff, watercolor tricks, things like that. So, you know, no TikTok for me. 
I already talked about last week. I'm not going to use threads. I really got over Twitter and threads is just another Twitter. And I really don't feel like having the meta people, as they now call themselves, owning all my social media. But the strategy is you really should, maybe every six months or so, go through your social media and correct it. Because they're using algorithms and the algorithms go sour after a while. I can't explain that. I'm sure all the computer nerds among you are saying, no, Gemma, that's not possible, except we all know it is. So, you know, it's valuable to rearrange your social media. The other thing is I've hit that realization that it's not going away. When I was young as a therapist and treating kids exclusively, we had this thing about teaching kids to get off social media. Guess what? That's really dumb. Now, in those days, we didn't know how it was going to explode. But the reality is social media is a huge part of our culture right now here in the States. So you're really going to have to learn to manage it. You can't simply exclude it. There are people who are not on it. and I'm sure they're perfectly happy. I was back in the day, but I have some really good reasons to use it. I am connected with some people solely through it, and I really like them, and I want to keep those connections. But the reality is you are not the slave of social media. It is your slave. And I would say this about your email, about texting. And the really surprising thing is almost every patient I see in psychotherapy now has a problem with social media. We talk about it. I probably talk about managing your social media out of my 28 patients, maybe about hmm, 10 to 12 times a week, 10 to 12 patients a week. This is not just in your head. Everybody is struggling with this. It is a really new part of the culture. It's very similar to when computers grew into the culture in the late 90s, early 2000s, where suddenly everybody had to have a computer. Everybody had to have email. Well, this is the next wave of that. So you're going to have to learn to manage it. And I would really suggest that you put on your calendar just a reminder every six months, like maybe on June 1st and December 1st, a reminder that says fix your social media. How do you fix it? You go into your email and you unsubscribe to three items per day because once they get your email, everybody's in there. You can't believe the garbage I get. And you go into Facebook or Threads or whatever X, whatever you're using, Instagram, and you just start getting rid of junk you don't want and joining stuff that represents you. So I joined watercolor groups. I joined local gardening groups because I could not find people in the gardening stores who knew what they were talking about. And I could not find plants that represented the desert. Wow, I have the most exciting set of contacts I've made in the last few days about this. So go in there and consciously weed out what you don't want, including people trying to sell you things, you know, whatever you need to weed out. And redirect your algorithms to get what you want. The other thing is pay attention. If your phone or your operating system will tell you how much time you are spending on the computer, pay attention to that and manage it. Now, I spend a lot of time because I spend six hours a day, five days a week seeing patients. So I'm always going to have a high amount, but I still do pay attention to, am I going beyond that? Okay, so the strategy is you need to periodically rearrange your social media to make sure it's representing what you want. You need to consider limiting your time or watching your time. You need to consider filtering out your email, getting rid of all the garbage in your email. Also, that includes get rid of accounts you're not using because they collect. If you work in different places, everybody gives you a different Gmail account, you know. So go through and don't make this terrible. Just do this Like once every six months, take yourself out for a nice lunch as a reward. In the fluffy books, I did finish the Bridgerton prequels and I am looking for the Smythe Smith series. But right now I am in the middle of Frog Kisser by Garth Nix. I love Garth Nix, as I mentioned previously. Be careful with Frog Kisser. In the beginning, it looks like it's just going to be very mainstream, tedious, same old thing. When you get to Gerald the Herald, that's where things start getting very interesting. Garth Nix has a lovely ability to take the tired old themes and twist them. But he spent some time in the beginning setting it all up and it does get a little slower than I like. So far though, it's been worth it. Something I really like, well, you know I'm on the apple cider vinegar kick. 
and I'm doing shots of apple cider vinegar. I do a shot when I get up in the morning. I try to do one before every meal if I don't get a chance to. I will do one after the meal as soon as I get home. I will do one before bed because I'm about to lie down. Remember, this is for those of us who have too little stomach acid. If you have too much stomach acid, it's Pepsid for you, I guess. But if you have too little and you take Pepsid or Nexium, you're going to suffer. Okay, so the next thing that happened was I was looking at Ken Berry, MD's website, and his YouTube. And he has a recipe for Ketoraid. This is Keto Gatorade. Why is that important? Well, if you're keto, and you don't have to be. But if you're keto, you're going to get keto flu in the beginning because when you're eating keto, you lose all those lovely chemicals in your food. And a lot of them do give you electrolytes, primarily sodium. Okay, so one of the things that happens when you go keto is you suddenly need to add sodium and potassium because you're not going to get the overload of electrolytes you used to get by eating processed food. So the way you get around that is Ketoraide, that is Keto Gatorade. This is so easy to make, it's criminal. And you need to remember that. And also this tastes like Gatorade. It doesn't taste exactly, well, it does taste like neutral Gatorade. But the reason I say it tastes like Gatorade when I would run marathons, every three miles I drank Gatorade because I wanted it. That's the only time in my life I want Gatorade. I have to be really dehydrated. As you can imagine, after this whole thing with acid reflux, I wanted Gatorade. So I made Ketorade for the first time. Boy, I wish I had done this the minute I went keto. This is so easy. All the stuff that you don't have around the house, you can get off Amazon, including the apple cider vinegar. Please use a high quality apple cider vinegar that has the mother, that is the fermentation source, still in it. In my book, that's Bragg's. Yes, you can get it on Amazon in a two bottle pack. Mine arrived a little bit leaky, but they were okay. They weren't broken. Okay, so here's what you need. The recipe is right there in the show notes with a picture of all the ingredients. Half of a lemon juiced. Now I haven't used that yet because I didn't have any lemons but just the juice of half a lemon or go get the bottled lemon juice and you'll see it on the side how much that is. Instead, I've been using a sparkling water with orange natural flavoring to get the citrus. That's not really great. You really do want to get lemon juice in there because citrus juice is good for you. It's a good acid. Okay, the juice of half a lemon, half a teaspoon of new salt, half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt or a good quality sea salt, five to 10 drops of stevia concentrate, two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. And then you fill it out with a quart of sparkling water. So some information, new salt, that is potassium chloride. Regular salt is sodium chloride, but potassium is really good for you. And again, it's one of the electrolytes you'll be missing a lot of if you're eating keto. So that's why the new salt's in there. I found that really helpful. This stuff is not wildly expensive. I bought like a six pack of the little blue cylinder shakers you can see in the picture for something idiotic like 20 bucks. And look at the amounts, like these are only half teaspoons, kids. Okay, so you mix it all together and I put it in a mason jar, you can see it there. And I like that mason jar, it's a quart mason jar and it's got a special lid. If you lift that teal colored tab, you can drink out of it, you can sip out of it. So I like the mason jars with the special caps. I'm using sparkling water from Trader Joe's. They sell it by the liter, so it's a little more than a quart. And when you are tired and thirsty, you will go through this stuff. And it's great. When I don't feel good now, it's the go-to. I just go right to it and drink some. If I don't feel like drinking my shot of ACV, apple cider vinegar, I will instead have a bit of Ketorade. That is a lot less ACV than just straight shots. I also want to tell you, by the way, when I'm drinking those straight shots of ACV, it's a teaspoonful, five milliliters, that's all. It literally is just a swallow. You could spit that much into your hand. It really doesn't take that much. People were saying, oh, you need X tablespoons per day. No, you don't. A teaspoon straight up. I used to put it in water. You know what? That's just a long time to swallow and it gets annoying. Just swallow one big swallow. You're done. Okay. But the something I really like this week is Ketorade. It is a lifesaver in the hot weather. I came home today from running my errands and doing Project G. And I have to tell you, I slugged back 
about a pint of Keterade and felt so great. Meanwhile, put a lid on it, the tea tastings, all my tea came. You can see a picture there of all those envelopes in the front, not the canisters in the back. That's what I got. It's really great. It was their peach tea sale. Currently, they're having an iced tea sale. I don't know what that is. If they're doing like a pre-packaged, easy dissolve iced tea as opposed to the actual leaves, and I don't care. Right now, with Plum Deluxe, I have house teas for the winter, the Earl Grey's that I like that I've told you about. I have the watermelon mint and the peach tranquility, and there's one more healthy, good for you herbal, I forget. Those are the house iced teas for me right now. Oh, the pear and cinnamon. I'm forgetting the pear and cinnamon. That's right. Those are the house iced teas. So the project now is to find a rooibos that I like. I don't think that's going to be very hard because I've already really found the flavors that Plum Deluxe is doing that I really like. I have not got into tasting Snarky, but they're probably next on the menu when I get through the tastings on the Plum Deluxe just to see what's there. The blather. Oh, the birthday gifts. My beloved has been giving me a weekend of birthday gifts. So Friday night he gave me roses. Yesterday, Saturday, he gave me keto chocolate bars. And today he gave me a wonderful book of interesting basic watercolor techniques. Things like spattering, using salt, all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm so happy with that book, I have to tell you. Meanwhile, on Friday night we decided... I used to finish work on Saturday, and Saturday night we would go to local Mexican. Friday night it doesn't work. We tried it. Friday night we were galloping because my son had to get home for an appointment. So we've realized Friday nights, no. But Saturdays we will continue our Mexican tradition. And yesterday, Saturday, I said, but I have to be at this craft giveaway at 5 p.m. How will we do dinner? Because I have to be there 5 to 7. Little did I know that I could leave at 5 after 5 because my yarn would get taken right away. So I come home and, you know, meanwhile, we decided instead, since we were going to miss that dinner, we went for a big lunch. It was so nice. A Saturday, 1 o'clock-ish, nobody was there, dark and quiet. It was so lovely. And then I went galloping down to Santa Clarita and I worked on Project G, which is getting rid of the stuff in our garage. And it was such a really nice thing to do. And then after Project G, I went off to the craft exchange. At the craft exchange, by the way, I took nothing home. I really made a point of just getting out of there. But Project G, at this point, I think, as of last night, I figured I'd taken out about 50 boxes. There were over 200 boxes, as far as I can tell. When I say take them out, I cut them along the seams. So I'm cutting them into small pieces. And then I load them in the back of the car till the car, the trunk, is stuffed. And then I go around, and I've really got this down now. I find public trash cans. I do not load them. I put one handful, yes, one handful, in each trash can. My trunk probably has about, mm, gosh, a good 20, 25 handfuls. But these are public trash cans. My taxes are paying for them, but I don't think it's fair to load them up. I really want people to use the trash cans. We have a problem up here in the high desert with people dumping trash all over the place like nobody owns the properties or anything. And in my town of Acton, they have routine cleanups where we go out as volunteers and clean stuff up. So I'm not into that. At the same time, you can't use people's private trash cans because we pay for that space for our trash. I have gone into dumpsters behind buildings that belong to companies. And the reason I've done it, I've, I've just said once or twice, this has to go in a dumpster, like a pile of junk clothes, that it's just too big and it's going to fill up a public trash can. But I deeply avoid that because, again, those people pay for that space. So my rule there is if I patronize them, I will use their dumpster. But again, the most I will put in it is one small box because I don't want to interfere. The other rule I have is I now know trash collection day. So I don't put anything in an empty dumpster because that means their trash has been collected and they may need all that space. What I do instead is I go to the dumpsters that are full and that I know trash collection is the next day. Yes, it's not a hard schedule to figure out. I use my friend the internet and I am a goddess of research. So I go to a full dumpster and I put one box in and that's it. And I have to be a patron of the business. So that's kind of my rule book. 
do with it what you will. Now, the interesting thing on day two, I was lifting things off the floor. As you can see, the floor is covered in the top picture on that collage picture. And I got the floor cleared and there on the floor was this beautiful bookmark. And it's cross stitch, which I originally was thinking the 90s. Then I realized, no, I didn't cross stitch when I was a professor, I don't think. So I think that's from the 1980s. Yes, I've got a 30 year old cross stitch. It's a beautiful bookmark. It looks to me like it's on a Glen Shee linen from Scotland because it's very hard to find a high thread count linen that good quality in America, let me tell you. And when I lived in Scotland, I bought a ton of that stuff. That's a pre-made blank for a bookmark. And I probably just picked it up to round out a purchase at one of the stores in the new town in Edinburgh back in the day. And it's a very beautiful, delicate little thing. So there's my 30 year old gift to myself. And I now have it sitting in one of my old journals because I found that in the garage. And I will talk about that next week. That is Project T as in transcribe. Project G, I will show you some recent pictures when I get a chance. But I have to tell you the first great thing that happened was my husband joined in and he helped me clear a path to the garage door, which is great because I had to carry the boxes into the kitchen and all the way around through the house and out through the front patio. And I was stacking them on the front patio, which was rather unattractive until I could back the car up and put them in it. Now I can back the car up to the garage, open the garage door and just walk them straight out. Boy, that saves a lot of labor. And you know, I have just gotten to this place. I do not go out of my way for Project G. Every day I cut down five boxes and I stack them and I put them in the back of the car. And then if I'm going into Santa Clarita, I will start putting them in the places I mentioned, but never twice in a week. I don't want to fill up other people's space. I just say a little bit here, a little bit there, and that's reasonable. And again, I have to patronize the business. I'm not just dumping stuff on them. So that's how that's going. And you can see my newest sword. Yes, I finally got a box cutter to aid in this. If you're going to do this, be very, very careful. These things are extraordinarily sharp. They're razor blades. So you really have to remember to keep cutting away from yourself. So far, so good. And because it is my trusty sword and I do have a history of medieval studies, I dubbed it Sir Box Cutter. It is my trusty blade. All medieval knights named their swords. So there we are, Sir Box Cutter, my sword. And you can see what I was doing. I was piling that stuff. That was before I really learned to cut up the box as well. But that's what I've been doing is piling it in this corner in the patio in the front where the wind does not take it. Now I don't even have to do that because we have a cleared path through the garage. I cannot tell you how much better the garage looks. And the other thing is I am tightly focused. I'm doing nothing but the boxes. So there's this temptation to clean the garage. There's garbage all over the place. I have one rule. We have these big, big bags that we use for dog food. They're 40 pounds of dog food bags. And so, you know, they can be used as trash bags. So every time I go in the garage for anything, I scoop up a dustpan full of garbage from the floor and I put it in one of those bags. I've killed, filled two of the bags so far. The garbage is not what you would think. Often it's just old dried out packing materials or weird things that were in the boxes like dead spiders, trash, whatever. So actually we are slowly clearing out the garbage, but the point right now is just the boxes. On to the Green Fingers report. Well, we've had rain this week, again, just a little bit, but you can see the old trumpet vine that came with the house under my son's bedroom window. Look at that baby go. All those beautiful, beautiful orange flowers. The other two trumpet vines that I planted did survive being chewed to the ground by the rodents. And the rodents haven't been back and they are doing okay. They're growing. Their job right now is to put down big roots and to stay alive. I don't need them to do this, to flower and grow big like this. Perennials take two years at least to settle in. So we just need to keep them going. And two of the three milkweeds survived. One milkweed and the Shasta daisy, those are our fatalities. But everything else is doing okay, which is good because I have six more milkweed coming this end of September. And the Hummingbird Mint, which is over on the other side of the patio, is doing gangbusters. It's bushing and getting bigger. It's just lovely. There's also a picture of Audrey Four from outside the patio because I wanted to show you how she is beautifully twining around our front patio that my 
husband just painted. That is the front patio fence. And you can see by the door, there's this big vine looping over. It's covering our broken old lamp there. I actually want to retrain it to go up the post in the front, but we'll get there when we get there. But we are doing very, very well, and we're waiting for those next plants. On the calendar, hooray! I am now officially working Monday through Fridays at work. This has its inconveniences, but on the whole, it's a really good change. And I've had a very easy month, but we're not going to have a lot of money this month as a result because I, I just lost like 11 patients while I was getting rid of a difficult to manage provider, insurance company that is, and while I was changing to the schedules. So I have a heap of intakes, but that's okay. That keeps you fresh. And meanwhile, I don't have to take Saturdays as vacation days, so that's going to help a lot with the rest of my calendar. And I'm getting Monday holidays, so that's going to help on Romeo week. So the reality here is I am now Monday to Friday, and I'm on the lovely three-day weekend, the first of many to come, I hope. Meanwhile, the Cognitive Fiber Retreat 2023, Saturday, November 11th. I'll be there Friday night, as will many other people, I think. And we will settle in and we will work out some of the, the dings that still need to be worked out, like classes and stuff. I can't wait. Evolution of Psychotherapy, that will be in Anaheim at the Anaheim Convention Center right by Disneyland. If you want to come meet me, go to dinner, anything like that, I'm game. If you are an indie selling down there, do let me know. I'm trying to think, Laura's not there anymore, but I used to know some people down there. So, you know, sure, if you have a shop down there and all that, I'm sure, why not? I think I'm going to take the train down, though. I don't think I'm going to drive. So that may put some limits on me, but the train is a lot of fun, frankly, to go down there. And I will be there. I will be there at least the 16th and the 17th, but I suspect I will go like the night of the 14th. We shall see. I am deeply, deeply looking forward to that. In the meantime, Minerva gets the last word, and you can see she is hanging with my son and staring at me as cats will while he looks at my book collection. And Minerva wants you to know that you should hang out with your people. I'm having a lovely birthday weekend of doing exactly that, and Minerva thinks this is very healthy of me, and she would like to encourage you to do the same. Also, while you're hanging out, COVID is on the rise here. I do want to warn you, if you're coming to the fiber retreat, make sure you have some masks. There is not a rule. So far, there's no mandatory masking, okay? But I do want to let you know it's on the rise. Uh, I have about 10 or 12 people in my caseload of 28 who now have it. It is really here. So far, everybody's kind of watching it, and nobody's quite sure where this is going to go, but... I'm not anticipating any problems, and we're not going into another quarantine, I don't think. But I got my flu shot today, and I would tell you, yeah, you probably do want to get a flu shot. You probably do if you can get RSV. Somebody pointed that out, but it wasn't offered to me. But if you can get RSV, bring your COVID up to date, do that. Because remember, we're going to be kind of close together. If you want to wear a mask during the fiber retreat, absolutely. If you're going to feel better that way, absolutely. Wear a spit shield, gloves, mask, hospital gown, whatever you want to wear. Okay, just be comfortable. And remember, we're all going to be respectful of each other's decisions on this. In the meantime, what I'm really talking about is we are a community above all else. And when we take care of each other, we are taking care of ourselves. When we take care of ourselves, of course, we're taking care of each other. So on that happy note, everybody, remember, stay safe. Take care of each other, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. So we have come to the end of another episode of Cognitive. Please do not use this podcast to diagnose yourself. If you think you are having a mental health problem, please contact a licensed mental health professional. Show notes for these episodes can be found at cognitivepodcast, all one word, Dot blogspot.com. Episodes can be found at iTunes under the name Cognitive Podcast, but also can be found posted next to the show notes on the Blogspot page. Thank you so much for listening. Everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.